if you look at the construction of the optical fiber we can see three coaxial layers the innermost layer is called as core which has got the refractive index of mu1 then we have a layer called cladding having the refractive index mu2 and at the end there is one protective layer because this inner layer core and cladding are made up of plastic or glass which are fragile in nature the protective layer will protect them from getting damaged the innermost layer is called as core the light waves actually will travel through this particular region core and uh, the principle on which uh, the working of this optical fiber is based is called as total internal reflection this total internal reflection can be achieved by maintaining the refractive index of core mu1 to be greater than refractive index of cladding mu2 the diameter of this core is usually of the order of few micrometers in the next slide uh, we will see how the total internal reflection occurs and what are the conditions that must be satisfied for total internal reflection to occur this figure will give you an idea about total internal reflection when the light rays enter into the core and arrive at the core cladding boundary they are reflected back into the core and after multiple reflections the light rays ultimately arrive at the other end for this total internal reflection to occur two conditions must be satisfied condition number 1 refractive index of core must be greater than refractive index of cladding and second condition is the angle of incidence of light rays at core cladding boundaries must be greater than critical angle of incidence so the angle of incidence of light rays at core cladding boundary that means here must be greater than one particular angle which is called as critical angle of incidence let us try to understand what is the meaning of this critical angle of incidence in the next slide for total internal reflection to occur two conditions must be satisfied refractive index of core must be greater than refractive index of cladding and angle of incidence of light rays at core cladding boundary must be greater than critical angle of incidence so let us try to understand what is the meaning of this critical angle of incidence for that uh, let us consider this diagram in this diagram uh, we have a boundary which separates uh, core from cladding so below this boundary we have a core denser medium having the refractive index mu1 and above this boundary we have cladding a rarer medium having refractive index mu2 so mu1 is greater than mu2 let us make the light ray incident at an angle phi i so phi i is the angle of incidence at the core cladding boundary so light ray is incident at an angle phi i at core cladding boundary the angle of refraction phi r will be greater than phi i because the light ray is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium so angle of refraction phi r will be greater than angle of incidence phi i here if you try to increase the angle of incidence if we increase the angle of incidence then angle of refraction will also increase and for a particular angle of incidence phi i equal to phi c the angle of refraction will become 90 degree so this is the critical angle so critical angle of incidence we define as the angle of incidence at core cladding boundary for which the refracted light ray travels along the core cladding boundary in other words the angle of incidence at core cladding boundary for which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees is called as the critical angle now if you adjust the angle of incidence greater than critical angle then the angle of refraction will be greater than 90 degrees and therefore the light ray will be reflected back into the core so this is called as total internal reflection and for total internal reflection to occur the angle of incidence must be greater than critical angle of incidence and secondly the angle of refraction will be greater than angle of incidence only if the core refractive index is greater than cladding refractive index so this is the reason why core refractive index must be greater than cladding refractive index then only the angle of refraction will be greater than angle of incidence and we can achieve the internal reflection so this is the definition of critical angle of incidence it is defined as the angle of incidence at core cladding boundary for which the light ray travels along the core cladding boundary after refraction 
In other words, we can define it as the angle of incidence at coriolis boundary for which the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees. So, according to Snell's law, we can write sin phi i upon sin phi r. Phi i is the angle of incidence and phi r is the angle of refraction is equal to mu 2 upon mu 1. So, this Snell's law you must be familiar with sin i upon sin r equal to mu 2 upon mu 1 we write it as, but here angle of incidence is phi i and angle of refraction is phi r. So, according to definition of critical angle, we have seen when phi i is equal to phi c, when angle of incidence is equal to critical angle of incidence, then phi r is equal to 90 degrees and therefore, we can write sin of phi c upon sin of 90 that is equal to mu 2 upon mu 1. Sin of 90 is 1 and therefore, sin phi c can be written as mu 2 upon mu 1. So, for total internal reflection to occur, sin of phi i must be greater than mu 2 upon mu 1. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, then please subscribe to the channel so that you will get timely intimation of new videos uploaded to the channel. Thank you. Thank you very much.